<laughs> you know, throughout the years, a lot of people have asked me, Fred, why the scarf? And I always tell them the same thing. Why don't you mind your own f***ing business, pal? Cartoon Network and all of its various shows are a really hot topic. Not just on this channel, but everywhere it seems. Even with people who aren't necessarily in the cartoon fandom space, I'll constantly see people debate on Twitter whose era of the network was better. And while that's clearly subjective and there is no definitive answer, there is one era that at least to me embodies the network best. An era where all our favorite characters from different shows met hand in hand all sharing the same space and being forced to interact with each other. And what made these interactions different from most crossovers was the fact that the characters weren't getting together to team up against some big bad monster, but instead were forced to live in the same space and interact with each other in the same way that we would. A concept that the network played around with for a few years before they decided to fully commit to it. Excuse me, sir. Who? Me? Do you have your employee ID? What is this? A bureaucratic barricade from my very own place of employment? Your ID. Do you have it? I must. So at one point in time, it looked like everything on the network was leading up to this point. Not just cartoons being aired on the network, but these cartoons coexisting within the network, living in the same space and working to entertain us. There was a clear vision for the channel and the city that the shows would live in. So that leaves me wondering. Why did Cartoon Network abandon CN City? Characters like Fred, Flintstone, Bugs Bunny, Tom and Jerry, and Yogi Bear were pushed to the forefront of the channel's branding. There wasn't really much in the way of building a community for cartoons, but the network was just starting. And like anyone who's trying something new, they'd experiment with different ideas, which would lead us into the network's Starburst era, which wasn't super popular and only lasted a year from 1997 to 1998 but more importantly moved us into the powerhouse era, which was the first time the network really promoted their own homemade shows. The bumpers for this era itself were pretty simple, usually involving a buff man flexing his muscles and a schedule being displayed on them. Other bumpers of the era would take clips from the series themselves and recolor them so they'd appear to be newer to the viewer, but nothing crazy as far as bumpers themselves go. But while the network wasn't spending too much on the bumpers themselves, They'd be marketing their shows in a way that the network never did before. They're like a bunch of butterflies. Because in this era, we see the network's first attempt at creating a community between different cartoons and their respective characters. The network used them outside of their shows by having different characters to host Cartoon Cartoon Fridays and plenty of music videos under the name Groovies, where we get classics like this one. <laughs> So the crossing over of different shows for the network was starting to become second nature. So like every other era of the network so far, they slowly, not so slowly, start to phase it out. And after six years of the powerhouse era, the network started to have other plans in mind. Kicking off the summer of June 14th of 2004, we get the city era of Cartoon Network and it was magical. This didn't just feel like you were watching cartoons on TV, it made it feel like you were experiencing life with them. Well, uh, okay, maybe not that far, but you get what I mean. Seeing all of these characters come together wasn't just this once in a lifetime thing like before. No, this was every commercial break we'd see them come together and live in a single community. Characters we never would have guessed have interacted with each other were now sharing lunch or even laundry with each other. And each bumper were made more unique than the last one. They were made for their very specific purpose of marketing the specific show that is in it, or shows that were in it. And while the network was just starting to look like the best it's ever been, some of the shows from before were ending. One of the problems with creating unique bumpers that crossed over many different characters from many different shows was the fact that the shows changed. As the shows that were starting to end were starting to phase out of the network completely, they'd need to create new bumpers for the characters that they would bring into the network. Which, as you could imagine, would cost a lot of money and rendered some of the bumpers that they had already worked so hard on unusable. Just look at Boomerang's old bumpers. They were really cool and unique and took a lot of time to create. 
Some bumpers could be used for any show and were just filler in between episodes, while other bumpers were made for specific shows. Shows that were no longer in production or running on air. Yet they had already spent the money on making them, so why not get their best value out of them? So they just used bumpers made for one show to announce the schedule of a completely unrelated one. And that's kind of the case for CN City. It was a very valid attempt at making a network feel special. And it succeeded in that. But networks are only willing to put so much money into something like bumpers for shows. With Cartoon Network being third in ratings behind Nickelodeon and Disney Channel, I can only assume why the execs didn't think that making bumpers for newer shows was necessary. Especially if it would mean throwing away the bumpers that already included the shows that were cancelled. So after a beautiful two and a half years, CN City would abruptly be replaced as kids would leave school to go sit down in front of their televisions, hoping to spend another summer with their favorite characters, they'd be met with this. I like music, I do, I like, I like music that goes like, la 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 But sometimes I like the music that goes like, la 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 Yes. While the party was over for us here in America, it was only just getting started for Latin America. Because CN City was to go on for three more years for them, only ending on August 6th of 2010. Their attempt at making the network something that could stand out in a way that neither of the other children's network could was admirable to say the least but was already becoming a faded memory to us. Cartoon Network has always been ambitious, maybe a little too ambitious at times, but still ambitious nonetheless. Their attempt at making the network something that could stand out in a way that neither of the other children's network could was admirable, to say the least, but was already becoming a faded memory to us. Cartoon Network has always been ambitious, maybe a little too ambitious at times, but still ambitious nonetheless. CN City as a concept hasn't been forgotten in the minds of the kids who grew up with it. While people tend to forget about the Stardust era and the Yes era, CN City is something that will resonate with animation fans for a very long time. And I'm thankful for the network attempting that. With the network changing from studio head to studio head, there's almost no telling what CN City could have turned into if it was still going on. But if Ian Jones Cordy is anything to go off of, I think the network and its characters are going to do just fine. Ian made it so both the city and its characters can live on, as long as the people who were inspired by it do. Look at me, please. Smiles, smiles, everyone. <laughs> Master Billy. <laughs> Miss Blossom, look this way. Very well. Say cheese. <laughs> Announcing the new McDonald's Cartoon Network Famous Friends Happy Meals. Eight fun characters, each with their own cool action. Blue and Wilt, the Powerpuff Girls, Billy, Mandy, and Grimm. Have fun with the Cartoon Network Famous Friends Happy Meals.